Good evening, Brown community and everyone else tuning in today from wherever in the world you may be. It is my enormous honor to welcome you to the 12th in our series of Brown Fashion Week talks, which are being broadcast live from the campus of Brown University here in historic Providence, Rhode Island. I'm Sasha Pinto, the president of Fashion at Brown, and tonight we are exceedingly fortunate to be chatting with the amazing Olivia Palermo, an entrepreneur and international style authority whose curatorial approach to fashion has made her a renowned tastemaker and major force in the fashion industry. Olivia's love of design and connection with art was born out of her studies at the University of Paris, and her journey into the fashion industry was launched in 2006 as an intern in the design house of Diane von Furstenberg. And since then, Olivia has worked both behind and in front of the camera with some of the world's most iconic names in fashion and beauty, from collaborating on collections for brands like Banana Republic to co-designing a collection with the late Karl Lagerfeld. As the founder and chief creative officer of the Olivia Palermo Group, Olivia has cultivated an enormous global community of fans and followers that look to her for advice and inspiration. And by enormous, I mean 6.4 million, which is the number of her Instagram followers. The Olivia Palermo website is a treasure trove of editorial content on fashion, beauty, and lifestyle that Olivia oversees herself, along with having had a collection of her own ready-to-wear clothing and managing her evolving e-commerce boutique. So suffice it to say, Olivia Palermo does it all. In fact, in a New York Times article written about Olivia not too long ago, the celebrated Italian designer John Battista Valli says, quote, Olivia is writing a new category in the fashion world that didn't exist before. Wow. So with that, won't you please join me in welcoming the remarkable Olivia Palermo. Hello, Hi, everyone. Olivia. How Hi. are you? I'm so well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here tonight. Well, we are just thrilled to have you. And let me just start by saying how incredibly generous of you to be here at Brown Fashion Week. We really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it. And thank you so much for the warm welcome. And thank you so much for the kind words. It was very sweet and touching. <laughs> well, thank you. And, and how are things in New York? Are you and Mr. Butler, Wonderful. your adorable dog, enjoying some lovely springtime walks? I am indeed. Mr. Butler is doing really well. I'm looking forward to his 16th birthday in uh, June. And, you know, I think we've been really fortunate in New York. We've really taken, um, you know, Corona very seriously. And protecting and wearing masks as New Yorkers. And I think if you look in the global scale, New York is you know, on the rise and we're so fortunate that we're working every day and people are out and about and other places around the world aren't as fortunate. So I think you know, through the silver lining, you know, New Yorkers are holding through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, fingers crossed that better days are just on the horizon. Yes, but we always have to look to, to, to sunshine. <laughs> no, that's, that's so true. And Olivia, before you get too chatty, let me tell you about your moderator for today. So Juliana Davis is a sophomore from San Francisco studying neuroscience. In addition to being the head of Fashion and Brown social media team, she's involved in the Brown Healthcare Investment Group, Women in Business, Scholars of Finance, and Brown's peer mentoring program. And that's just her volunteer work. She's that's quite also, impressive. <laughs> I know, I know. She's also worked for Generation News as a financial analyst and will start as a healthcare investment, investment banking intern this summer at Goldman Sachs. So she's quite an impressive young woman. Yes, so, a powerful force. I yeah. know, I know. <laughs> so please join me in welcoming our moderator, Juliana Davis. Nice to meet you, Juliana. Welcome. Hi, Sasha. Thank you so much for the introduction. Olivia, so good to meet you. Lovely to see you. So now that we are all here, I will sign off and leave you to get started. So bye for now. Thank bye. You. Hi, Olivia. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm so good. nice to see you. How is it in California? It's good. It's raining right now, but um, it's nice to be in the sunshine, you know. That's yeah. good. Well, I'm, lovely. I'm happy to chat with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So working from home in New York has been going well? 
It has been going well. And you know what? I, I think within the industry that we're in, everything is so in-person. So it's taken me a little bit to acclimate to digital. But I think, yeah. you know, it, we have to pull through <laughs> until we yeah. can all be together. Yeah, absolutely. So on the topic of work, um, I'm curious, what drove you to pursue fashion in your early career? Um, you know, when I was about 15 years old, I interned for Quest Magazine, um, a family friends magazine, and I met my closest and dearest friend, Edward Barsanian, who then went on to work for The Times and to be a Vogue star um, for Vogue magazine and online. And then he went off to Victoria Beckham. And I think through the lens of the two of us and our love for fashion, I think we empowered each other through all of our years of being friends. Um, and I think it was a really wonderful kind of foundation to start working in magazines together and having a very similar perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm sure everyone in the audience, you know, being a college student or around the college student age is curious to figure, it's curious to find out what you did after you attended the University of Paris. I did, you know, I really loved the University of Paris. It was an incredible experience. I met people from all over the world and it really gave me a global perspective, um, a part of it, which I think, that led me to working for Viacom and kind of looking at the fashion industry and trying to figure out what I want to do just beyond working for magazines. Um, but of course, you know, when you do work in fashion, you should start from kind of ground up and really understand the ins and outs um, from every aspect. And so for myself, you know, my time at DVF was incredible working for Viacom, but it gave me a global perspective of how a global brand works um, and working for um, Viacom and working and during at the magazine world, um, it gave you an insight of editorial and I had already had that experience. So it only kind of helped my growth when I decided to go on to start my own brand afterwards. And I think through that time, it was really nice because there was um, a space in the market that wasn't there. And, you know, I write my kind of my own script to things. I do my own thing. And I think, you know, through that time, there was a huge change in fashion. I think from starting um, from the internet and through apps and people being able to see fashion on a much more accessible level um, and having, you know, everyone a box of life be have that experience of fashion, which I think is incredible. I think Nana Porte had a huge um, impact on that within the shopping experience. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I was very fortunate. Um, social media was starting. And of course, it's something I'm always continuing to learn and evolve from. There's always a new app or um, you know, a new form of, of uh, in media platform. Um, so I think for me that I was really fortunate in that time when I started. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. Sorry, I know that was a bit long, but I... <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, so you just mentioned the Olivia Palermo website, which is amazing. I've been spending so much time on there. Um, so you once posted outfit ideas on there and personal blog posts. And now with a, it's a massive success with a major facelift, including the introduction of e-commerce. Um, I love you that you call it a facelift because that's exactly what I call it too. <laughs> Every, everything needs to judge. Everything needs to facelift after, after exactly. some time. And you know, when I started it, um, you know, the world on the internet was more of blogs and, you know, uh, websites and less on um, a little bit. Facebook was just starting, but Instagram mm -hmm. hadn't appeared yet. So I think it was a perfect time. And then over the years, it's really evolved onto an editorial platform. And I'm so fortunate to, um, you know, even have Edward have a voice on our platform to this day, um, you know, and bring his incredible lens to our brand. Absolutely. Um, would you mind talking a bit about how you transitioned from doing those amazing blog posts into now the e-commerce world? Absolutely. You know, from day one, it was never me writing. It was always having a team of editors and contributing editors. And mm -hmm. I was always about, and still to this day, about supporting young emerging talent. And whether that's a designer, uh, a writer, or any type of creative, I think it's really important. So, you know, when I'm evolving and growing, it's important to support people as well um, through that journey. And so I had incredible um, group of people that were able to capture the lens of the beginning voice for the brand. And now we're in such an incredible place. And I'm so excited because, you know, from what it's 
started and what it is now is is really you have a full circle experience where you're able to come to Olivia Polervo and not only see the editorial lens, see things that I like, but also have the same kind of shopping experience. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, speaking about the shopping experience, um, you have all of your different collaborations with all these different brands on there. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a bit about, about what you've learned while collaborating with a bunch of different people, including Karl Lagerfeld, Nordstrom, Banana Republic. It's been amazing. incredible. It's honestly, it's been wonderful. And I think from when I started out modeling and doing brand ambassadorships that has led me to design collaborations, it's all throughout everything in my experience and working with the teams and the creatives um, and understanding the brand ethos. And when I work with any brand, it's important for me to come in and have a organic experience, an organic conversation, um, love for one another, but it's not for me to come in and change the brand. It's for me to uh, highlight and, you know, what they're best at and put my own little stamp on it, but also bring in a new customer base and put a new set of eyeballs on as well. And through all of it, it's been incredible because, you know, working for a fashion brand like a Karl Lagerfeld that is an incredible structure and works on a very high level, very similar to myself. And then when you work with a, um, a Nordstrom's, for example, you're working with an in-house brand and they are a retailer. So they work in a very different way. So it's really interesting to see how all different um, internally, how people work. And I think it makes me it makes my job much more well-rounded of understanding um, all the different aspects of the industry and how things work. And it's, I've been very lucky and very fortunate and everyone I've worked with has really been extraordinary and it's been a learning experience. And I think that you always have to continue to learn. You have to continue to grow. Um, and if you feel bored, then you need to kind of take a minute and reset and you know, surround yourself with people that are going to push you through, mm -hmm. will inspire you. Um, and so even to this day, I have countless amount of people that continue to inspire me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so it seems like you have a lot on your plate at all times. Um, I'm sure a lot of the students in the audience have are under a similar situation, but you know, maybe not as intense. Um, so I'm wondering how you prioritize your time between all of your different business ventures. I, I do, I wear a lot of many hats. Um, I, when, you know, Corona has is, is been a bit of a different time where I've been able to kind of reset and, you know, time is, is different now. Uh, prior to that, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm, my mind is always active. I really never shuts off. So even if I want to get sleep, you know, I probably sleep um, not as many hours as most, um, five hours. But, you know, I like to start my day working out. And, you know, also it's important throughout everything that you do, no matter how busy you are, um, and managing that time, which is really important. Um, you have to take time for yourself because if you yeah. don't, you burn out. And I think many people forget that and realize that. So I do want to point that out. It, whether it's a massage, a facial, a walk in the park, a manicure, pedicure, something to recharge you um, because we all need it. We really do. Absolutely. I totally agree. Um, <laughs> so you mentioned that you find inspiration from the people around you. I'm curious if there are any other places you find inspiration, you know, you've been in New York for your whole life or whether that was studying in Paris. Yes, you know, I've been really fortunate. I think after I moved to university in Paris and I moved back, um, I met Johannes a short time after. So my life has always been between New York and Europe. So I've been really fortunate and traveled all around the world for work for over a decade nonstop. So most of the times I'm not usually home very often, maybe like over 170 days, 180 days out of the year, most of oh the time in Europe, Asia, yeah. Middle East. So it's been, it's incredible. And it, you know, it's important to go to all those different cultures, understand what's going on in the current market, meet local designers, meet people. It's just like, it's important to be able to connect and for our industry, especially, it's even more important that we have that interaction. So I definitely deeply miss it. And I think where I get at all my inspiration that comes to me um, and motivation and where you get that extra like surge is really mm -hmm. when I'm sitting on a plane on Lufthansa or Swiss and I'm in the sky in the evening, early morning when no everyone is asleep on the plane and I watch the beautiful colors and I read my magazines. It's really my time where I reset, I meditate and I kind of 
think what is next for the Livia Glamour brand. Absolutely. I personally love flying on planes. It's so relaxing sometimes when there's not a bunch of turbulence. It's actually one of my worst fears. <laughs> Um, so, I, I really love it, you know, and I think yeah. that like, you know, anyone that anyone that has any fear when there's a little bump, think about it as a, um, uh, you're going in a pothole <laughs> on the street of New York. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I can say it. <laughs> I'm going to make sure. the wing and watch the wing go and you'll feel more calm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'm sure a lot of people here are so interested in the fact that you are being used as a case study or you're participating with Instagram as a case study. Um, I'm not even quite sure that a lot of people know that what, what case study means. Do you, how does being a part of a case study with Instagram work and, and, and what does that mean for you? Well, I have to thank my head of communications, Derek Conrad, because he's amazing. <laughs> and you know, he's really he really um, keeps the brand, you know, fully functioning um, in the sense of keeping me informed of what's going on in social media, um, what, you know, Instagram is asking, and you know how we can work and be collaborative together. So um, it's very flattering, and we work very closely with Instagram, and they're an incredible team to work with. Yeah, totally. Um, when you first downloaded Instagram, did you ever think that you would amass such an amazing following of about 6.4 million people? Um, no, I, I didn't. And you know what? I really didn't. I, I actually didn't post very much. And um, we, over the last few years, we started to post more. And I think, you know, there's a really healthy balance between, you know, the Olivia Plummer brand and seeing a little bit of insight between myself. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, you know, how we've tried to keep it. Um, and yeah, that's, yeah, personal. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> um, how has being a person of influence changed from when you first started on the platform and, and where do you think that's going? I, there's so many different cycles. There's always cycles, you know, there, I, I have started way before, you know, bloggers, influencers and so forth. And I'm sure there's going to be a new terminology coming up. And I think it's been, it's incredible because there, it gives a, people inspiration and platform to have a voice. Um, and I think it also opens up a lot of doors for um, people that maybe have been in different industries that are now more inspired by fashion or beauty and they're going in that direction or photography. And I've seen that throughout the years and I, I love seeing that, it's incredible. Because, you know, as myself, I'm very artistic. So I always love to see an artistic lens. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, being on social media and, and you know having your own platform, I'm sure it's so important to have a balance between being candid and but maintaining your privacy. Um, so how do you ensure that who you that you're representing who you are on social media while protecting yourself? We try to be as organic as possible, honestly, and that's really what it comes down to is being organic. And if you know there's some a beautiful photo that I want to share with our readers, I'm you know, we'll post it right away. And of course, you know, stories within oliviaplumber.com that we're super excited about that we want everyone to go to the site and see. We also try to, you know, highlight that as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, so diving a bit into your personal style now, your style is timeless and classy, yet also chic and current. Um, so I'm wondering how you balance being tailored with being so, with being tailored and polished with being trendy as well. You know, there's kind of a fine line there. There is a fine line. And you know what I've always said is, you know, if, if one is not into trends or is uh, a little reluctant to step into the current trend, um, you know, you have to stay true to yourself. And, you know, I always have used the example that if, you know, the trend of the year is blue, the color of the season is blue, you know, maybe do it within the jewelry or do it within the shoe or a sock or, you know, within an accessory that you can highlight it that way and have gradual steps into it. But um, you know, for myself, I, there are certain trends I, I, of course, love, and then there are certain ones that I don't. Um, but you know, I, I stick to 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 what I love, and <laughs> yeah, yeah I, agree. I agree. Um, how has your style evolved over the years? I know that, especially in COVID, um, it's so hard to maintain being fashionable when there's you know nowhere fashionable to be. <laughs> Well, you know, I think over the years, just like anything within time, you know, you evolve as a person, your eye evolves, your taste evolves. Mm -hmm. um, I think that goes for interior design as well. Things that you liked at 20, you're not necessarily going to like at 25, 27, 28. 
and that's okay. And I think, you know, that you should continue to evolve and let that happen. And um, for myself, I've been exposed to so much at a young age. I'm fortunate with my aunt. She worked for Doyle's Auction House for 25 years in the vintage and couture department. And I've my mother is an interior designer. And so I was able to play with those textures and fabrics. And then working in the magazine industry and understanding that and working with designers, it's you know, I have my eye has been exposed to so much. So I think it's just so important to try new things and to be open to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as someone whose secret dream it is to be a person of influence, of influence themselves, um, I'm wondering what a typical day in the life is for you, you know, maybe not um, during COVID, but um, yeah, what is, what is it like being with <laughs> Well, you know, during COVID, it's, uh, it's, you know, things are a bit quieter and going back to your earlier question, I forgot to ask, answer you is, you know, I, I think even during COVID, you should be always stressed, you know, get your mindset and feel set for the day. It's super important. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always continued to maintain that. Um, and, you know, going after COVID, I think, you know, just everyone should be more open-minded about things and interests that they like and continue to evolve and grow and it's so important to do so I think that even within my own business that we've pivoted in ways and um it's been a great experience because we have um you know kind of to reset and I think everyone in the world kind of needed to reset yeah thank you so much for sharing um so you have over six million followers on Instagram which we've talked about a bit you have your own personal e-commerce site and collaborations with some of the biggest people in fashion I'm wondering what is next for you? You know, you've kind of reached this amazing high. Uh, what's next? Well, I, you'll have to wait till spring. We'll have an <laughs> announcement. I'm really excited to share. I wish I could share this evening. Yeah. Um, sure. But yeah, I, we have a lot of, we have like a, we have a new chapter to Olivia Flamer brand and I can't wait to share that. And of course we'll continue to have lots of fabulous fashion and beauty and accessories and whatnot. I'm so excited to find out what that is, and I'm sure it's a very big secret. Um, and we have we have lots more Piaget campaigns coming up, and we've just recently shot LG with Misty Copeland and oh Lewis Hamilton, which was really lovely. So we have that, and I'm really fortunate that I am able been able to be the Dress for Success ambassador for the last year and work really closely with the women. So I'm looking forward to continuing my work with that. Absolutely. How have you established any, have you established any comforting routines to help you get through this year of isolation? Um, you know, I think through this whole thing, you know, you, you know who your true friends are. You, sp you have a handful of them you speak to every day, um, working out, taking time for yourself, you know, managing your time. Um, and I've really been really grateful to spend this time with my husband, who's incredible, and my 16 year old dog. It's been really wonderful. Yeah. So for all the students on the call who are passionate about fashion and want to enter the industry, do you have any advice for them and, and kind of how to break through that wall? Absolutely. Well, I think prior to COVID, I would have said, you know, go into an office and get an intern job, whether that's in a PR company or a magazine, but currently that's, we can't do that. So, um, but I still think, you know, reaching out digitally there, I'm sure there's so much that can be done. Um, I love you know, fashion PR, I think that's a really great way to start. I think editorially, it's an incredible way to start. Um, it really depends on like what, you're, what you want. And I think you know, working as an intern for a fashion house is also an incredible experience. It's just figuring out your own path. But mm -hmm. I definitely say start there. It's <laughs> great advice. Thank you so much. Um, what is a hurdle that you've had to face on your path to success? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think, you know, within anything, there's always learning experiences. Um, of course, you know, managing a business is an important responsibility that I take, I've always taken very seriously. Um, so that's something that I keep very close to me. Um, I don't find that hurdle. <laughs> um, I, as hurdles, I don't know. Um, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Of course, there's probably little micro ones on a day-to-day -day basis that you challenge, but you know, you pull through and that's the important part. You want to rise above it and be the bigger person and find a solution to the problem at the end of the day. Thank you. So maybe on the brighter side, I guess, what are some of the best? I always look to the brighter side. I, I yeah. try not to answer the <laughs> negative. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, what are the best parts of your job? You know, what do you enjoy the most? Honestly, I work with so many incredible people, so many incredible creatives that keep me excited about my job. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about what I do. Meeting fans all around the world on an everyday basis makes mm -hmm. me so excited. It warms my heart. I love seeing what direction in life they want to go in and fashion. I think that's exciting. Um, so there's so many different things, you know, uh, modeling. I absolutely love, I love consulting for brands. I love designing. Um, I like that editorial outlet as well. So, you know, I think all in all, they go all hand in hand. And I think that throughout the years, working with incredible creative directors, incredible photographers, incredible editors have really been able to, to shape my eye and I'm incredibly grateful for it. Yeah. I'm sure it's a little difficult, you know, missing those in-person aspects of your job within the past year. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Even just to go in for a market appointment and a market appointment is um, where editors, the buyers go in and they meet the designers and meet with the PR teams and speak about the collection and what their vision was for designing the current season. So I really do miss that in-person experience. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of us do as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> If you could look back to your younger self, what do you think you would say? I'd really say that I don't regret anything. I think everything, again, goes back to a learning experience. I have been really fortunate to always have an incredible support system and team around me um, from my times in school with growing up with a learning disability to my times of creating my own team and um, looking at every aspect and of, of everything. So um, in that sense, I don't. And I think that everything that I've done and led up to now has um, led me to the knowledge that I have. Right. Absolutely. It's so important to have such a good support system with you. Um, I really get this. It's yeah. so important. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say your support system has kind of shifted over the years and, and there are different people in and out or, or how do you find those people to stay by your side? I think you have loyal friends to stay with you through and through that you see through the years and people come in and out of your life and they come back in. Um, but you always have a handful of friends that you can count on. Yeah, I totally agree. So back to kind of uh, maybe the, the more negative side of things. Um, have you ever made a mistake that you learned from that you could just share with us so we could learn from it too? Um... It's kind of a tough question. <laughs> yeah, you really put me on the spot here. Let, let's go to the next one. I'll come back to that one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so what is a must read, watch or listen piece of media that you have been kind of consuming within the past few days or weeks? I'm really into documentaries at the current moment. I, you know, my husband and I watch so much television. We watch so much, like, I mean, from every show, and movie, mm -hmm. and, but recently over current, I've really, I, I'm definitely a documentary buff. So I've watched lots of things on The Queen. I've watched lots of documentaries on wine, on art. Um, so, you know, it just really depends on your outlet and what you're, you're in the current mood for. But I think, you know, people go in different phases of their lives and find currently is in, you know, National Geographics and <laughs> documentaries. Oh my gosh, I love Nat um, National Geographic's. They're amazing. Um, I just watched the, the Taylor Swift documentary on Netflix. It's been there for a minute. Um, it's fantastic. Yeah, and I like to watch different documentaries because you know, I, when you watch a documentary, it always has a specific um, you know, narrative to it. And it's so I like to watch a few to have my own perspective. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so here's a funny question for you that Olivier Rusting had a hard time answering. Um, what do you like to do that you're bad at? And what do you not like to do that you're good at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm with him on this. You know, I, I absolutely adore him. He's amazing. He is amazing. Um, he's amazing. What am I bad at? Um, good answer too. <laughs> I was bad at going to college because I shopped all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um and what I'm good at and that I don't want to do all the time um oh gosh 
I'm really good at skiing and I don't do it enough. And I, the ski season, since I've been, haven't been um, in Europe and we haven't gone to San Moritz, it's been killing me, but I wish I could do it more. And unfortunately ski season starts in December, but because of global warming, it really doesn't start until like end of January. Right. So I I miss my sprint, my spring skiing. (laughs) Is there one person that has influenced your style the most? Oh, that's a good question. I think that my husband has definitely been a huge influence. He has an incredible eye of how he puts menswear together um, naturally. I think, you know, speaking about Edward again, we have a very similar aesthetic. Um, And, you know, various people within fashion that I admire, um, you know, whether it's Valentino or Giancarlo, of course, they're also men that are incredibly inspiring to me. John Batista is also a human that is fabulous and endlessly inspiring. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so within your collaborations with other designers like Karl Lagerfeld, how do you bring your own personal style, but make sure that you're, st- you're um, respecting their style as well? You know, like how do those two mesh together? Of course. It's a very fine, it's a, it's a very fine line to walk. And I always like to sit down and meet with the creative team. We meet with the marketing team, seeing what their current commercial line looks like, and then look at that and see what their direction is, and then kind of put our own inspiration together. But there's always some sort of direction. It's just kind of unspoken. (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely interesting. It's all on paper. (laughs) Yeah, it's a skill for sure. Um, Earlier, you mentioned that you're an optimist. Um, Has that always been your outlook? Absolutely. I think it really has. And I think that goes back to having an incredible support system as, at a young age. Um, I was really fortunate to have. And yeah, I grew up with, as I said, many struggles with a learning disability, but having a great support system kept me optimistic. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think one saying that I've always lived by is that everything not only happens for a reason, but everything always works out. There's always a solution to the problem. So no matter what, that's kind of like at the end of the day, you know, it's all going to be fine. So it's going to be fine. Just in the moment, you might just feel it's not. But I think the important thing is to always look past that. Yeah, everything happens for a reason is one of my my mottos as well. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so when during your time in your internships, you know, being an intern is kind of difficult. You know, it's hard to kind of enter a company for the first time. Um, what is one piece of advice that you would give to the students in the audience who are entering internships as well? I think it's really important to meet everyone in the office and to get to know everyone and understand what everyone does and to, you know, always lend a hand when, you know, someone needs it. And I think that experience will be valuable. Absolutely. I totally agree. Um, so we have some audience questions that I'm oh, sure excited. Yay. <laughs> they would love to ask you. Um, one is from actually a childhood friend of mine, Lyle Felser from San Francisco, um, is wondering if you didn't pursue fashion, what else do you think you'd be doing? Oh, well, I can answer that very clearly and happily <laughs> for you. So before um, going to the American University of Paris, I actually was very much into riding and into Mm -hmm. lacrosse and I was actually trying to I was maybe going to play lacrosse and for university um and during one of the tournaments um I had broken my wrist Mm -hmm. and so that had changed my course but what it had done it had opened up two different avenues one I had met Kevin Plancher who he is an incredible orthopedic surgeon to this day he's basically our family doctor and he works with everyone in the sports industry. He is like the most incredible doctor. And the second one led me to fashion and led me to moving to Paris because if I hadn't, I I wouldn't have decided that, you know, I wasn't gonna go play lacrosse or ride. I was gonna go and move to Paris. And so similar to like when you grow up in New York, you grow up in an urban city and you love an urban city. And for me, I chose Paris and I didn't know anyone. Um, I didn't speak the language and I just was like, okay, I've arrived. And ever since then, Paris has kind of been a second home to me. Um, and I spend you know, over 40 days out of the year there for the collections. Um, I have really dear friends that live there. And so when, I always, when I'm there, it, just, it, it always feels like a second home. 
Mm-hmm. And, and when I went, and, and if I hadn't, I would have been a sports commentator to answer your question. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. Do you still yeah. get the chance to play lacrosse and ride horses? No, I don't do anything. I just, I, I, I ski all the time. So that's my main passion, but I am a huge New York Rangers fan. And, you know, I've always said being a Rangers fan will put you in therapy by the end of the season, but this season, I don't think we'll have to go to therapy because they're doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, So another person who submitted a question, Reno Hashimoto says, Instagram is a wonderful platform through which to share creative content, but how do you navigate some of its more negative aspects and develop a healthy relationship with social media to protect your mental health? I think it's really important. You know, I'm always about, you know, not overindulging and, you know, having, everything is a balance. And I always say that everything is balance. And so for us, it's about finding that happy balance between my private life and the business of of Olivia Palermo. So um, it's kind of, you, you have to have your own sense of what works for you and your own science. And uh, hopefully for us, you know, everyone enjoys it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, So we have another question from Ellis Clark. He says, um, your style influence is regarded as as the last in a line of traditionalist fashion. Do you ever feel compelled to to highlight more progressive brands, designers, or styles that receive less spotlight given the reach of your platform? Well, we, I always try to support young emerging talent. I, you know, I think I spent a lot of time in Milan um, over the last few years and, you know, the craftsmanship and quality, I really, I think that there's m- bigger brands like Max Mara they support and Cuccinelli. And then you have smaller brands um, with incredible craftsmanship like um, Santoni, for example, or Cassidy. So um, for myself, I, I try to find a healthy balance. Absolutely. Um, another student is wondering who is your favorite designer? Oh, my favorite designer is Valentino. He is absolutely incredible and I love him dearly. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sorry, we have a lot of student questions on here. So there's and I also love John Batista. John Batista. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, someone's wondering how do you practice self care? Um, I know that kind of relates to the first one we talked about with Instagram, but um, oh, yeah, you know, so yeah, it's really you know, I have I was really fortunate. It was embedded to me at a very young age to always maintain, take care of yourself. I get my manicure, pedicure every week, get my hair done every month. You know, I think those little moments where you take time for yourself, it recharges you. It makes you feel like the best version of yourself. Even if one thinks it might be superficial, like you still feel great. So however one can feel great and whether that's, you know, again, getting a facial and massage, anything, I think carve that time out. <laughs> I agree. It's really important to work that into your schedule. You have to, there's no excuse for it. And there's no excuse for not working out either. Everyone can like carve out time. It's all about the time management, as you said earlier. Absolutely. Even 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, just a couple more. How has New York Couture influenced your style? Well, um, New York Couture is more Paris Couture that's influenced mm. my style. Um, you know, the craftsmanship in Paris, it's a very small uh, community, and Jumbo is actually one of the um, one of the last and youngest designers to be admitted into the council, and he's done it so incredibly elegantly, gracefully throughout you know, the last ten years. Um, and it's really about craftsmanship, and I think we have so much disposable fashion that mm-hmm. Couture is a place that people can go for fantasy, for beauty, um, and they can take their mind into a totally different place. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and speaking about disposable fashion, um, thrift shopping has become ever more present recently. Do you enjoy thrifting or if so, how do you go about picking a piece? I giggle that it's a current trend because I've been doing it for years since <laughs> I was really young. You know, you, it doesn't matter where you go, you can always find something amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I'm someone that always loves to go on a, a little bit of a hunt. So I think that's great. Yeah. Do you have any tips and tricks? Um, I go down to, when I'm home, I go down to West Palm Beach. Um, they have a really a lot of great um, vintage outlet stores. And when I'm in Europe, I usually go to Portobello Market or when I'm in Paris, I go outside of Paris to the markets. 
Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing. I'll make sure to check all of those places out. <laughs> Put them on my list. Um, yeah. In your closet, what is your go-to piece? In my closet, my go-to pieces are probably from Max Mara and Montclair. Mm. What are Without they? Don't mind me asking. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I really have, I have a great camel Max Mara suit that's a culotte and I have a vest um, double breasted version. And I also have um, a blazer double breasted. And I always think that's super chic for a purple, perfect day occasion. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> um, what are your words of wisdom for students who are still in college right now considering pursuing a career in fashion? Well, finish school, and then when you do, <laughs> um, you know, I think take a, take a minute and figure out, you know, what you want to do and start applying to all different um, avenues within the industry and see, you know, what clicks. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I thank really you. appreciate it. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for having me. It's been so such a pleasure, and I've been looking forward to this for so long. <laughs> yes, it was such a pleasure to hear a, your fabulous recount of your amazing career and thank you so much for sharing your inspiring words. I'm sure everyone in the audience appreciated hearing your words of wisdom as much as we did. Um, on behalf and of- Congratulations everyone. I wish you all the best of luck and you know, believe in yourself and you can do everything. It's all possible. Absolutely. Um, on behalf of the entire Brown community and particularly Fashion at Brown, I want to say how incredibly grateful we are that you carved the time out of your busy schedule to sit with us. Um, My pleasure. To, yeah, Good chat with you. <laughs> um, to everyone in the audience, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you at the rest of the amazing Fashion at Brown events, which you can check out on our website. So goodbye for now and have a fantastic evening. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.